You know what just occurred to me? The fact that it is 2024, which means that five years ago, it was 2019. Wow, whoop de doo I can do math. Crazy. I'm Asian after all, right? But the reason I wanted to make this video is because scrolling on the R Canuck subreddit, I stumbled upon a few statistics, numbers, and ideas that really got me thinking about where we were five years ago. No, not we as in the team, but we as in the fans, and what Canucks fans were mostly talking about in that summer of my freshman year in college, pretty much. Because the biggest story surrounding the Vancouver Canucks in 2019 was the fact that they traded away a first-round pick, Merrick Mazanich, and another draft pick, I believe it was, for one J.T. Miller. And back in this time frame, it was seen as a really big deal. What the hell is Jim Benning doing? Why are the Canucks trading away draft picks? They are a rebuilding team. Why is JT Miller coming over to Vancouver? That is not the asset they needed. He's too old. He doesn't fit with the same timeline and opportunity window as Pedersen, Hughes, and Besser. What gives? And philosophically, I can totally understand why this trade did not make sense in the eyes of many Canucks fans analyzing where the team was in their rebuild and what the appropriate value of a first round pick in 2020 would have brought. It's just, from the Vancouver Canucks perspective, I'm not saying that this is the right way to look at it, but I'm saying this is the way the Canucks at the time looked at it, especially with Aquilini at the helm and Jim Benning listening to everything Aquaman was trying to pull. The Vancouver Canucks were trying to get competitive quickly, and if it meant sacrificing a draft pick or two that they found valuable, it meant sacrificing that draft pick. They grabbed JT Miller, who at the time was coming off of a few 50-40 point years here and there. He was alright with Tampa Bay, even more alright with the New York Rangers. But JT Miller was seen as a guy who was playing in a system in Tampa that was just not utilizing him all too well. He was on the third line and he was not really scoring as many points as he could have if he was given a bigger role. And so Canucks fans thought, hey, this guy's gonna come over to Vancouver, he'll be a middle to top six caliber option, he'll get 50 points and we'll call it a day, right? And the funny part is, I say in the title and thumbnail of this video, we were wrong about JT Miller. I'm gonna say for me personally, I wasn't as wrong as most of y'all. Because I, for one, actually did like the JT Miller trade. You can watch the video we made back when it was made of me saying that I liked it so. In fact, I made a second video, a day after, addressing the hate for the Vancouver Miller trade because a lot of people in my comment section of the first video and all over different parts of social media were complaining to hell and back, this team should not have made this trade, this player is not a good acquisition, he is not going to help the team in the ways that Canucks want him to. And the best part is, Miller quickly shut everybody up. His first season in Vancouver, 2019-20, he had 72 points in 69 games. He was over a point per game in both the regular season and the playoffs. He was an absolute force, was totally, totally dominant, and the Canucks never looked back from there. Miller then had a 99-point season in 21-22. He dropped down to a point-per-game year in 22-23, where everybody was complaining about him and his work ethic. But in 2023-2024, he bounced back up to a 103-point season in 81 games. 37 goals, 66 assists. Miller is looking better than ever. And at 31 years old, signed till the end of 2030, making 8 million bucks a year, that's pretty significant. Sure, he may not be a 100-point player for the majority of this contract. I mean, it goes on till the end of the decade, pretty much. By the end of the decade, he'll be, what, 35, 36 years old? So it's not really all too projectable anyways. But for right now, what the Vancouver Canucks are trying to do, with what the Vancouver Canucks are trying to accomplish, JT Miller is arguably the best gosh darn contract on the team, and he's for sure the best contract on the forward core. For 8 million bucks, you have an all-situations, versatile, playmaking, leadership caliber, two-way defensively responsible forward. And he does everything. He is so good at passing, he's so good at creating plays, and he can score goals too. JT Miller is a guy that nobody back in 2019, could have predicted he would have become. And the best part is, it gets even crazier. 
There was an article published by Daniel Wagner the other day on VancouverIsAwesome.com asking whether or not J.T. Miller will become the second Canuck in franchise history to have two 100-point seasons. And I actually had a little bit of a lull when I read that title. I was like, really? There's only been one? And then I had to think to myself a little bit. I was like, okay, yeah, McGilney, that was only one. Naslin, only one. Bertuzzi never got there, I think. Henrik and Daniel, they each had one, but that's two different guys. Oh my goodness, yeah, Pavel Bure really is the only guy in Canucks history to have two 100-point years. JT Miller has the potential to do that again. Some of the comments go out there and say this, JT is a gosh darn animal, and I fully believe he can hit 100 points again. Captain Dingus says, the dude is the most underrated player in the league. Who else scores over 100 points, kills penalties, feasts on the power play, lays devastating hits, and will fight anyone anytime? I hope Canucks fans realize how lucky we are to have this guy on our roster. I think he can for a couple of reasons, Han Solo5643 says. With new voices in charge of the power play, that could mean more points on the power play, which will help. A healthy Pedersen could help as well. You pair a healthy PD and a power play that should be better, then I don't see JT Miller not reaching 100 points again. Another comment says, absolutely. I mean, he could have already been in that category. He had 99 points two seasons ago. And that, I think, is another thing that people sort of swept under the rug. The fact that Miller's 21-22 saw him be a 99-point player. But the even crazier stat was posted onto the Canucks subreddit by Paper Moonshine. If Pedersen and Miller get at least 77 points this season, they will be the 7th and 8th all-time Vancouver Canucks point scorers ever, squarely in between and surrounded by players who are in the Ring of Honor or who have had their jerseys retired. Will both Petey and Miller be at least Ring of Honor worthy by the end of the season to you? And then the screenshot attached is of Miller and Petey. Miller has 402 points. PD has 412. If they get 77 points, which is very achievable in this upcoming year, they will get right up in there to the 6th and 7th overall spots in Vancouver Canucks overall point production, which is crazy. And the crazier part about it is written about here in the comments section. Take a look at this one, posted by Let's Try That Again. The fact that Miller might pass Pavel Bure and potentially do it in fewer games played too is incredibly impressive and shows how understated he is for this team. Another reply facetiously says, I'm bracing for the actually JT Miller was better than Pavel Bure arguments next offseason. Oh gosh, that is totally going to happen, and we'll have to talk about eras and playing as a rookie versus as a vet, and it's all sorts of not fun at all arguments. And, um, yeah, you know, we're gonna have to say that. Pavel Bure was a more impactful, more influential, and a more peak-talented hockey player than JT Miller ever was or ever will be, and that's not a bad thing, you know? Like... I don't think anybody's going to go out there and say that, oh, you're doing Miller a disservice by saying that one of the best 100 players of all time in Pavel Bure is better than him. Yeah, calm your horses. I think if a lot of Canucks fans that are going to make those arguments about Miller in 2024, 2025, 2026 were around in the 90s seeing how Bure was doing his thing, then yeah, no, you guys would be probably silent. In fact... Even think about Bure from a talent perspective away from Vancouver. The guy was such a beast with Florida that he single-handedly kept that franchise alive and running pretty much. So either way, numbers aside, JT Miller is proving everybody wrong because nobody thought he would be in a position to even challenge the name Pavel Bure in terms of Canucks points and Canucks games played five years ago when he was acquired by Vancouver from that trade in the Tampa Bay Lightning organization. We were wrong. Maybe y'all were a little bit more wrong than I was because I thought that he'd be fine. Didn't think he'd be this good, but man oh man am I happy to be proven wrong. This is one of those situations where it's like, yeah, everybody wins. Everybody wins because Miller got better, the Canucks got the good player, the fans got a huge surprise and success out of this good player, and Miller got the bag. He got $8 million a year for a long-term contract, and that, of course, is great to see. We'll just see whether or not he's able to hold up to that as the seven-year deal continues on. 
Either way, though, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about JT Miller and how he is proving people wrong. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishashro 9 And bye. <laughs>